Hello, and welcome to the Trepid Technologies Security Plus course. My name is Johnny Bandon, and I'll be the instructor for this video series. In this video, we will cover Domain 5.2, Regulations, Standards, and Frameworks. Now let's get started. The first regulation we will cover is the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. This is a regulation that protects the data rights of EU citizens. The GDPR is only enforced when conducting business in the EU or when you process EU customers. Under the GDPR, users have the right to data erasure and security. As a security administrator for your organization, you must inform the stakeholders and management of the different data sovereignty laws, like the GDRP, when processing data outside the U.S. The Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard is a U.S. regulation that details the rules for storage, processing, and transmission of credit card and debit card information. If your organization processes credit card information in the U.S., you must comply with the PCI DSS regulation. This will go over stuff like how to properly segment your network when you're processing credit card information, what they consider a PII, what you're allowed to store, right? <clears throat> now let's go over frameworks. The main difference between a framework and regulation is that a framework is a best practice you can implement and will help you harden systems, secure your network, and to comply with security standards, but it still is not mandatory most of the time. There are a few exceptions, like let's say when you're operating in the DoD or the U.S. government, data networks must meet NIST standards if you want to process data on government systems or classified systems. So the first framework we will cover is the CIS or CIS, which stands for Computer for Internet Security. It is a framework that can that can you that you can use to help Secure computer systems. If you want to learn more about CIS, just Google Center for Internet Security and check out their website. Uh, the security exam objectives just want us to briefly touch on what CIS is. The NIST RMF, or the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, publishes a risk management framework, or the RMF, that provides a formalized process to select and assess risk-based security. This framework is a mandatory standard for any government agency, meaning that this framework, again, not a regulation for everyone, but if you want to work on government systems, you must be using the RMF. And this can also help your, help your organizations establish a baseline, right? This is still good and best practice for any organization. And if you are able to say you are compliant with NIST, that gives your customers a sense of security that they can trust you know what you're doing with their data. NIST CSF, or the Cybersecurity Framework, this helps organizations develop and evaluate the state of their cybersecurity systems. So this is a framework that will help you essentially audit yourself, right? The International Organization for Standardization is an entity that publishes business standards and technology standards that can be used internationally. ISO or ISO, it doesn't just deal with computer systems. They also publish frameworks for electronic equipment and manufacturing. For our purposes as cybersecurity professionals, we will focus on the 2700 and 3100 ISO series. ISO 27001 is an older framework that covers information technology in general. ISO 27002 goes, just, goes beyond just the objectives of securing IT systems and will show you how to actually harden and secure those systems. ISO 27701 contains standard guidance for privacy controls in your network. Then ISO 3100 provides guidelines for risk management programs. The last framework we will discuss is a SOC, or Service Organization Control Audit. A SOC audit will provide a report on your organization's security functions and controls. A SOC audit can be beneficial in providing you with information on where your security controls are lacking and how you can improve them. The SOC audit we need to be familiar with is a SOC Type 2 audit. A SOC 2 audit will assess the organization controls that affect the CIA triad 
and the privacy of information stored on your network. So if you hire an outside firm to conduct an audit on your systems, what you're going to be looking for is for them to give you a SOC 2 report, right? So remember that come test day and for the exam and for real world, you want the SOC 2 audit report if you're going to use a third party party to audit your network. All right, so that is all we have for this section. I want to thank you for viewing and stay tuned for our next video. We'll go over domain 5.3 policies to organizational security. Thank you.